What's up Kyle gang, welcome back to Statics. So let's solve this problem. So we're given this I-beam here and we want to find the moment of inertia around the x-axis and the y-axis uh, with respect to the axes. So let's try to do that. So what do we have? Well, we have this I-beam and I went ahead and then broke it up into three simple shapes. So we have this rectangle on top, this rectangle on bottom, and this vertical rectangle. And each of those are h wide and I labeled them one, two, three. Now we know about the shape is it's symmetrical across the x-axis and across the y-axis. So that's going to make things pretty easy for us. So we want to use the parallel axis theorem, which is what I have written here. So the parallel axis theorem says we're going to add up this for each of these shapes. So we can basically put a summation in front of it, and we're going to sum this up for each of the three shapes that we've divided here. Now this has the section i bar x and i bar y. For a rectangle, you're going to look at the back of the book, and you're going to find that the equations for those are 112 height base cubed or one half base height cubed. So what are we going to start with? Well, we're going to start with uh, IMR x prime. And what is this saying? Well, um, let's see. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. I think that this should be backwards. Um, it should be base height cubed, and this should be height base cubed. All right. so. Yeah, so let's go ahead and solve for this. So let's start with our first shape here. So we're starting with i bar x prime, so that's gonna be for our first shape here. So we're gonna simply add the 112 base height cubed, so one, and then height cubed is six cubed. Then we're gonna add the one area distance y squared, so we're gonna add our area of this shape, so it's simply gonna be one inch times six inches, because that's the area of a rectangle, based on its height. Then we're gonna multiply it by distance y squared. So what is distance y squared? Well, distance y squared is the distance from the center of mass and the shape itself to the subdistance of just the individual shape that we're looking at. So this i bar, this i beam is symmetrical across the x-axis, so we know its center of mass lies right in the center, which is like three inches up from the bottom here. Now this rectangle is six inches tall, so it also has a center of mass of three inches off the bottom. So their center of masses lie on the same plane. That means that the distance y is gonna be equal to zero squared. Um, so we don't have to worry about that part. So let's go to the next shape now. So we're going to 2, which is up there, and that will make more sense as we get to that one. So then we're going to do base, uh, which is 5 inches, times height, which is 1 inch cubed. Then we're going to go ahead and add it to the area distance y. So its area is 1 times 5, so 5 cubic inches. And then distance y, well now it's going to actually be different. So when we look for distance y, we're going to the center of mass we're looking for a certain distance. Oh my god, tip that off. So the center of mass of this rectangle lies along the center of there, like that. And we're gonna, we know the center of mass of our whole shape lies across here. So we're looking for this distance, this is distance y. So that distance y is gonna be three inches because this rectangle is six inches tall, plus half an inch. So what we're gonna add is 3.5 inches and we're gonna square it. Nice, so then, it can do that for our next one, so we're gonna add 112, so we're moving on to number three here. So its base is five inches, and its height is also one inch. And we're gonna add it to uh, its area, so area of one times five, and then multiply it by its distance in the y direction. So this time, instead of going up, we're going back down, but the shape is symmetric, so it's also going to be 3.5 squared. Cool, so this is what we're adding basically, it's just this equation. And if we do this, we find that i x. Do not mean to do all that, this should just be i x. Right, this is equal to 141 inches to the fourth. So inches to the fourth is our unit here because everything is in inches. And there we go, so we found i of x. So let's move on to i y. I'm going to erase this for that. So i, y is, we're doing the same thing, but it's kind of in reverse this time. So i, y is basically, we're doing the same thing, but around the y axis instead of around the x axis. So we're gonna start with i bar, I bar prime, y. Uh, so we're gonna do one over 12, but instead of base height cubed, it's gonna be height base cubed. So its height, uh, we're starting with number one is six, and its base is one cubed. And we're going to add that to area distance x squared. So instead of going vertical, we're going to go this way. So its area is 6 inches times 1 
and then it's distance x. So instead of going vertical, we're going to go this way. But you'll not be surprised to know that the center of mass of this shape number one also lies on the center of mass of the whole shape. So we're going to go and add a zero squared there. And now we're going to add that to our next one, one over 12, we're at shape two. So its height is one inch, but its base is five inches. So we're going to do five cubed. Add it to its area times five inches squared and its distance x. So its distance x is this direction. Uh, but that distance is, again, zero because its center of mass is here. And the whole shape's center of mass is along that line of the y-axis. So once again, it's going to be zero squared. And then we'll find out that the last shape, number three, is again, has a height of one and shape a base of five, so five cubed. And then its area is five. And its distance y is, again, it lies right on that axis, so we need to do zero squared. And if we do this, find that i y is equal to 21.3 inches to the fourth. And there we go, so we found our two answers. So that's how you do this kind of problem. Uh, this one's pretty simple because it's just three rectangles. But if you want more trouble with this with more complicated shapes, check out my playlist where I have more complicated problems from the same textbook. And so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.